السلام عليكم كان اي بي فريندز ويز نان مسلمز داز ذات كونتراديكت ذا كونسبت اوف الولاء والبراءة 10 years ago this question was asked a lot by Muslims who are living in non-Muslim societies it was very rarely asked in Muslim societies especially during the annual debate about congratulating Christians on Christmas now after the whole world became on your phone just one click away this question is literally being asked by everyone and the answer is not as simple as you think it is not just a simple yes or no there are a lot of details that you need to understand and you need to understand what is al-wala wal bara and that is exactly what we're going to do in this video the answer will be divided into six parts make sure you listen to all of them because if you take one of them out of context you will be even more confused so bring your coffee and let's start first of all we have to address the elephant in the room There are around 20 words in Arabic used to describe the relationship between people. All of them, when they get translated into English, the translator uses the word friend. This causes a lot of confusion when you read verses in the Quran or in Hadith that are using the word friend. You don't really get which type of friendship this is referring to. That is why before we read any verses or Hadith, we need to set up the terminology we're gonna use first. Let's divide friendship into levels. Let's say for example friendship level 1. This refers to someone that you know a little details about his life. Maybe you share a hobby or a sport or a game or you work together on a project, something like that. Then go to friendship level 2. This refers to someone whom you would occasionally spend a nice time with as a part of a group without having any one-to-one -one relationship with him. When you go to the next level, maybe you start to have some personal relationship. Then you start to share some secrets, some inside jokes. Then you start to share significant part of your time with him. Then you get affected by him and he gets affected by you. Then you develop an emotional connection with him. You treat him as your brother and you become sad if something bad happens to him. Keep going up, keep going up in level until you reach, let's say, friendship level 10. This refers to someone who you trust completely. Someone who you are loyal to. You got his back and he has yours. Someone who you will cry at his funeral and say an emotional speech about how amazing a brother he was. I want to say a brother that you love, but unfortunately the colorful people ruined this word for us. But anyway, this differentiation is very important because you might see fatwas contradicting each other when they get translated into English. For example, one fatwa might say, yes, you can be friends with this group of people. And in the other fatwa, it says, No, you cannot be friends with the same group of people. And you're confused, you don't understand. The problem is in the translation. English only offers one word to describe both relationships. While there is a thin line between what is halal and what is haram when it comes to friendship. And that is what we're going to learn together in this video. If you want to refer in Arabic to the higher levels of friendship, level 9, level 10, you would use words like khalil or wali. Each has a slightly different meaning that we're gonna discuss, but for now remember these words because we will need them when we start reading from Quran and Hadith together. Second of all, before we talk about non-Muslims, we need to remember the rules that applies to Muslims too. We need to remember that the highest levels of love should be reserved for Allah and His Messenger, peace and blessing be upon Him. The place in your heart reserved for the love of Allah and His Messenger should be much bigger than the place reserved for all of your friends, your parents, your family members, your business, or any worldly desires. Remember the word Khalil that we talked about? The highest level of friendship that entitles great closeness and love? Why was the Prophet Ibrahim, peace and blessing be upon him, given this title? Khalilullah, the close friend of Allah. He was given a choice between the love of Allah and the love for his own son. And he didn't even hesitate to sacrifice his son for God. Prophet Ibrahim was an example to learn from. Read with me Quran chapter 2 verse 165. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ Still, there are some who take others as equal to Allah in love. They love them as they should love Allah. But the true believers love Allah more. Get it? Even your own children cannot be more beloved to you than Allah. And that applies to the messenger too. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من أهله ومالِه والناس أجمعين. 
You're not a real believer until I become more beloved to you than your family, wealth, and the whole world. Umar ibn al-Khattab once said to the Prophet, You are more beloved to me than anything except myself. The Prophet said, No, I swear to God, it has to be more than yourself. Later, Umar ibn al-Khattab said, I swear to God, now I love you even more than myself. And then the Prophet said, Now, O Umar, now, O Umar. Quran chapter 9 verse 24 قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشُونَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْدُونَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٌ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ Say, O Prophet, if your parents and children and siblings and spouses and extended family and the wealth that you have acquired or a trade that you fear will decline and the homes that you cherish, if all these are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger and struggling in His way, then wait until Allah brings about His will. Allah does not guide the disobedient people. See how people who love anything more than Allah are called disobedient and Allah will not guide them. Now let's talk about who you should be friends with within the Muslim community first. If I meet someone who is a Muslim, does that automatically mean that it is okay for me to be his friend? The answer is absolutely not. God said in Quran chapter 18 verse 28 Patiently stick with those who call upon their Lord morning and evening. Those who pray day and night trying to please God. ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا. Do not let your eyes look beyond them, desiring the luxuries of the worldly life. He's not saying don't leave them. He's saying don't even take your eyes off them. ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا. And do not obey those whose hearts we have made headless of our remembrance. Who follow their desires and whose state is excess. Those who exceed in following their desires and seek fleeting happiness. Those who only think about how to have as much fun as they can today. Stay away from them. There is a reason it is sunnah to read this chapter every Friday. You really need to remember the important lessons in it, including this one. Because without a righteous friend, it is nearly impossible for you to stick on the straight path. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, المرء على ديني خليلي فلينظر أحدكم من يخلل Every man will eventually follow the lifestyle and the deen of his close friend. So take care who you choose to be your close friend. From modern research, we started to understand concepts like peer pressure, like FOMO, fear of missing out. We now know how great the effect of a good close friend on you. And we also know how devastating the effect of a bad close friend on you. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, مثل الجليس الصالح والجليس السوء كحامل المسك ونافخ الكير A good friend is like a perfume seller. You would either buy perfume from him or at least you will smell a pleasant fragrance. But a bad friend is like a blacksmith. He would either burn you or at least you will smell a repugnant smell around him. And the most important hadith regarding choosing your friend is this one. A man asked the Prophet about the hour. He said, When is the hour? And the Prophet responded, وَمَاذَا أَعْدَدْتُ لَهَا What have you prepared for it? The man said, لا شيء إلا إني أحب الله ورسوله Nothing much, but I love Allah and his messenger. Then the Prophet responded to him, أنت مع من أحببت You will be in the hereafter with whom you love. Then Anas ibn Malik said, We have never felt any more joy in our lives than this moment. When the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, That we will be with whoever we love. Because I love the Prophet, and I love Abu Bakr, and I love Umar, and I wish to be with them in the hereafter even though I don't have as much good deeds as them. And you can find the same meaning in this hadith. لا يحب رجل قوما إلا حشر معهم No man will love a group of people unless he will be with them in the hereafter. Now look at the people around you that you love. Ask yourself, are these the group of people that you want to be with in the hereafter? Or are you in a desperate need of finding a new community and making new friends? Do you love the righteous people who pray to God day and night and will lead you to the highest level in paradise? 
or will you severely regret being in this community? Think about it. God said in Quran, chapter 43, verse 67, Close friends will be enemies to one another on the day of judgment, except the righteous. The general rule is, before you decide to be someone's friend, ask yourself a very simple question. Are you willing to switch your hereafter with his? If the answer is yes, then go ahead, be his friend. If the answer is no, then stay away from him. Your friend should pull you up, not the opposite. Because we are in the 21st century, we have to talk about how technology introduced a new type of friendship. I'm not talking here about two friends who are calling each other on Skype or Discord. No, I'm talking about one directional friendships. I'm talking about this celebrity or influencer that you've been spending a lot of time with every day, watching him, listening to what he has to say, learning every details about his life, loving him, while on the other side, you are no more to him than a number on his likes counter. These influencers have the same effect on you that a close friend has, sometimes even more. These celebrities can and do mass brainwash millions of people, turn them away from the straight path of Allah, ignite their desires, sometimes even destroy their faith. These people are much more dangerous than close friends because they prey on your loneliness and give you their poison in a form of entertainment that will kill your boredom. They say who you follow now is who you will become tomorrow. Please read with me Quran chapter 2 verse 166 and 167. إِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَرَأَوُوا الْعَذَابَ وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ In the day of judgment, those who misled others will disown their followers when they face the torment, and the bonds that unite them will be cut off. They will say, it's not my fault that you became this bad person after you followed me. I didn't force you to follow me. I didn't force you to waste all of this time listening to me and trying to copy me. وقال الذين اتبعوا لو أن لنا كرة فنتبرأ منهم كما تبرأوا منا. And the misled followers will cry. If only we could get a second chance, we would disown them as they disowned us. If we just can go back to dunya and unfollow them. كذلك يريهم الله أعمالهم حسرات عليهم وما هم بخارجين من النار. This way Allah will show them their decisions as regret and they will never be able to get out of hellfire. This is very serious. Think of your eyes and ears the same way you think of your stomach. What will happen to you if you fill your stomach with junk food, donuts and sugar every day, all the time? You will become fat and you will lose your health, right? Well, it's exactly the same. If you sit in front of a screen and fill your eyes and ears with adultery, gossip, cheating, violence and every sin possible every day, give it time. You will be thrown away from the straight path of God so hard it will be very long way for you if you try to come back. Who you watch now is who you will become tomorrow. I hope this part is clear. The last concept that we need to cover before talking about being friends with not Muslims is having your own identity. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him was very strict with this concept. Having your own identity and being proud of it and never being just a follower or a copy like a sheep is something that we have to train ourselves on and I am one of you. Let's all learn from some highlights in the life of the Prophet. For example, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him prohibited us from praying before sunrise and before sunset. So we wouldn't be like the disbelievers who are praying at these specific times. Having our own identity. When the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him was discussing with his friends the call for prayer, some of them recommended using a bell like the Christians or a horn like the Jews. Did he agree to be a copy? No. He ordered Bilal to do the call of prayers, the Adhan. Having our own identity. When the Muslims were praying in the same direction as the disbelievers from the people of the book, the Prophet raised his hand to the sky and prayed to God to change the direction of the prayer. And Allah accepted his dua and changed the Qibla to Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca instead of Jerusalem. Again, having our own identity. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him saw how people like to act and dress like the rich. 
The rich were making long clothes that touched the floor behind them while they are walking. Did the prophet copy them? No. He was actually doing the exact opposite, right? Having our own identity. The prophet ordered men to leave their beards and even prohibited haircuts like Al-Qazah. Again, having our own identity. Another example, the day of Ashura is a day that both Muslims and Jews fast to celebrate the Exodus. The Prophet ordered us to fast an extra day so that we would be different than the Jews, having our own identity. When the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him was with the pagans in Mecca, he hanged down his hair to be different from the pagans. And then in Medina, he parted his hair to be different than the Jews. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, لا تكونوا إمها تقولون إن أحسن الناس أحسننا وإن ظلموا ظلمنا ولكن وطنوا أنفسكم إن أحسن الناس أن تحسنوا وإن أساءوا فلا تظلموا. Do not be إمها. Do not be without the will of your own, saying if people do good we do good, if people do wrong we will do wrong. No. Accustom yourselves to do good if people do good and to not copy them if they do otherwise. I know that unfortunately, sadly, the majority of Muslims are okay with being humiliated by losing their identity and being just copies of whatever they see on screen. I am one of you and I also got affected by that. We dress like them, we talk like them, we copy their immoralities and the sad part is some of us started to think like them. And this is exactly what the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, predicted 1400 years ago. لَتَتَّبِعَنَّ سُنَنَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ شِبْرًا شِبْرًا وَذِرَاعًا بِذِرَاعًا حَتَّى لَوْ دَخَلُوا جُحْرَ ضَبٍ لَتَبِعْتُبُوهُمْ قلنا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَى قَالَ فَمَنْ You will follow the steps of those before you inch by inch even if they enter into the hole of a lizard you will follow them The disciples said Do you mean the Christians and the Jews? And the Prophet answered Who else? We hope that Allah changes our situation for the better, especially our teenagers who really need to wake up and be proud of their heritage and their ummah. Before we start part number 6, if you skipped the video to this part directly trying to get a quick answer, please don't. Every chapter in this video is an important part of the answer that cannot be skipped, so please go back and start from part 1. Anyway, can I be friends with non-Muslims? To answer this question, we need to divide non-Muslims into three groups. Group number one, people who publicly oppose Allah and his messenger, call towards sin or mock the words of God or his teachings or the Sharia law or the believers in any way possible. If you have any love or any positive emotions towards this group of people, even if they are in your own family, you really need to repent. Yes. God said in Quran chapter 58 verse 22 لا بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم You will never find a people who truly believe in Allah and the last day loving those who oppose Allah and his messenger even if they were their parents, children, siblings or extended family God also said in Quran chapter 4 verse 140 وَقَدْ نَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْكِتَابِ أَنْ إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُوا بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَأُوا بِهَا فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا مِثْلُهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ جَامِعُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْكَافِرِينَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ جَمِيعًا He has revealed to you in the book that when you hear Allah's revelation being denied or ridiculed then do not sit with that company unless they engage in a different topic. Or else you are like them. Surely Allah will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers all together in hellfire. This is a very serious matter, especially this statement, or else you are like them. Just last week, this famous Korean singer who has millions of deluded Muslim girls following him, he shared a song called Bad Religion. And in the lyrics of the song itself, he has the word Allahu Akbar. The whole song is talking about how Islam is a bad religion and how falling in love with his male friend is amazing. A question to these Muslim girls who are dreaming about him every night. Who are you worshipping? 
how will you explain this to Allah when you meet him on the day of judgment? But the good news is, lately, most of them started to wake up. Let's take another example to fully understand it. Imagine if your neighbor is walking all over the street telling people that your mother, your own mother, is an adulterous woman. Will you love him or hate him? Will you follow him on all social media and listen to him talk badly about your mother every day? But Allah is more beloved to us than our own mothers and fathers. And we hate anyone who hates him. We love anyone who loves him. And this is the definition of al-wala wal bara. The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, "Man ahabba lillahi wa abghada lillahi wa aata lillahi wa mana lillahi, faqad istakmal al-iman." If anyone loves for the sake of Allah, hates for the sake of Allah, gives for the sake of Allah, and withholds for the sake of Allah, he will have perfected faith. This group of non-Muslims, their rule is peaceful hate, which means hate that does not translate into action. Offer them peace, be just when you deal with them, but don't love them. Group number two, the hostile non-Muslims. Hostile non-Muslims who do not offer peace, attack our land or steal our homes, their role is defend yourself with force. And group number three, peaceful non-Muslims who are respectful of your beliefs, who allow you to practice your religion, who never mock us or mock God or his messenger or his laws, who treat us with justice and are friendly. Their role is in Quran chapter 60 verse 8. لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلونكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين Allah does not forbid you from dealing kindly and fairly with those who have neither fought you or driven you out of your homes Surely Allah loves those who are just But before you run and hug them the verse is saying be kind and just it is not saying love them Remember when we divided friendships into levels at the beginning of the video from level 1 to level 10? There is a level in the middle where you are kind and nice to someone, treating him fairly, but still you don't have any love in your heart towards them, will never be affected by him, and will not trust him to be your protector. This is your limit for this group of non-Muslims. Quran chapter 5 verse 51 يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض ومن يتولهم منكم فإنه منهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين O believers, take neither Jews nor Christians as أولياء أولياء are close friends who you love and trust as protectors Take neither Jews or Christians as أولياء They are أولياء to each other Whoever does so will be counted as one of them. Listen to this. Whoever does so will be counted as one of them. Surely Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Of course, this is only referring to the higher levels of friendship, not the lower levels. Be nice, be kind, be fair, be just to them. But do not love them. Do not expect protection from them and never copy their lifestyle. And finally, as much as you can, offer them da'wah. Maybe Allah will use you to guide one of them to the straight path. Refer to our video about da'wah for more details about that. I hope you have your answer now. But before I go, I want you to read with me Quran chapter 19 verse 88. وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّا أَنْ دَعَوْ لِلرَّحْمَنِ وَلَدَا and they say, the most merciful has taken for himself a son. You have certainly made an outrageous claim, by which the heavens were about to burst, the earth to split apart, and the mountains to crumble into pieces, in protest of attributing children to the most compassionate. The reaction of the heavens and earth and mountains in this verse totally makes sense. A fair reaction to hearing God being insulted. Now ask yourself, why don't you have the same reaction? God said in the Qudsi Hadith, Shataman ibn Adam walam yakun lahu dhalik. The son of Adam insulted me, and he had no right to do so. Shatmuhu iyaya faqawlih, attakhad Allahu walada, wa ana al-ahadu samad lam alid walam ulad walam yakun li kufwan ahad. 
He insulted me by saying Allah has taken for himself a son. While I am the one, I am the everlasting refuge. I begot not, nor I was begotten, and there is none comparable to me. Ask yourself, do you really love someone who is insulting Allah every day? The Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, deliver my message even if all you can deliver is one verse. Do not let this video stop with you, share it with your friends. Also help it spread by engaging with it with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia law, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch more Q&A videos like this one, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and Salaam Alaikum.